Hello and welcome to another tutorial video. We're going to cover the equity method of accounting, otherwise known as equity investments or associate companies in this lesson. This topic is all about how minority stakes and other companies work on the financial statements. The accounting treatment is slightly confusing and we've gotten a number of questions about this over the years. The typical question we get goes like this. Can you explain how the accounting for equity investments or associate companies works? Where do net income and dividends go? What happens if a company changes its ownership percentage? What about unrealized gains and losses? So I'm going to give you the short answer first, along with the very basics that you need to know. Then we'll go into a more complex demonstration with a full three statement financial model in Excel. And I'll show you what happens with the net income and dividends. And also what happens when a company changes its ownership percentage by acquiring more or less of the other company. So this method of accounting is used when one company, the parent company has significant influence, but not control over another company, which we'll call the subsidiary company or subco. In other words, they might have a 20% to 50%, really less than 50%, so 49.9% ownership stake. It's usually not used if it's below 20%, though it can be sometimes. And above 50%, the accounting method starts to differ again, so we're not going to cover that case here. The basic idea is that the parent company records the subco's ownership percentage. So in other words, if it owns 30%, of the subco, it'll be 30% times the subco's net income on its income statement under equity investments or a similar name. Let's take a look at that in Excel right now in this intro tab right here in the Excel file linked to below this video. So here we have a parent company in year one and we have an associate company in year one as well. The parent company is about four times as big as the associate company. It owns 30% of the associate company and the associate company's market cap is 100. So the value of its equity investment in the associate company is the 30% times the 100, which is just 30 right here. Now on the financial statements, in this case, we are going to take all the parents' numbers for revenue and cost of goods sold, sum those up to get gross profit, and same for operating expenses, depreciation, amortization, operating income as well. So we're just using the parent company's numbers so far, and same for net interest expense, pre-tax income, income taxes we can recalculate here, although we could have just taken it from the parent company's numbers as well. And then we get to net income here, pre-tax income minus the income taxes. The one change that we make is at the very bottom, we have to record something for the equity investment earnings or the net income from equity investments. To do that, we take the associate company's net income and we multiply by the ownership percentage right here, the 30%, and we add that to the parent company's net income and we sum these up. And if we think about EBIT and EBITDA, for example, for the combined company, EBIT is just operating income. EBITDA is operating income plus our depreciation and amortization. So in this case, with this type of accounting, EBIT and EBITDA are the same for the parent company as they are for the so-called combined company. And really the only difference is this addition, the equity investment earnings or net income at the very bottom of the income statement. Now with that step done, the parent company will reverse that item, the equity investment earnings on its cash flow statement and record the ownership percentage times subco's dividends as a positive number on its cash flow statement and both numbers will link into equity investments on the balance sheet. As far as changing the ownership percentage, it gets tricky to explain. So let's start with a simpler example first of just what happens on the three financial statements when a company acquires a 30% stake in another company. As a basic assumption here, we need the subco's market cap and the percentage we want to acquire, as well as both companies' financial statements. And if you go to parent in Excel and then sub in Excel, parent just has the parent company's income statement, their balance sheet, and their cash flow statement. And then sub has the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement for the subsidiary company. The subsidiary company here is about 10 times smaller than the parent company. The parent company's revenue goes from 400 to 600, the subco's revenue only goes from 40 to 60. So we have their full financial statements here. Also up here, we have the market cap of the associate company each year going from 100 to 50 to 150 to 125. And we're going to say here that we get a 30% stake in this associate company. So what we do is record this acquisition as a cash outflow in cash flow from investing. And we put the debt issued if we fund this deal with debt below it in cash flow from financing. If we were funding with stock, we'd also put the stock issued in cash flow from financing. 
So let's go and calculate the percentage change in equity investments first by taking our new number and subtracting our old number. And then the change in the equity investment dollar amount will just be equal to this percentage change times the market cap of the associate company right here. And let's copy these across. Now going back to what I was saying, we have to decide how to fund this deal, whether it's cash, debt, or stock, or some combination of all those. To keep it simple, I'll say 50% cash and 50% debt, and we will just copy these across. So we have that. We can also now calculate the ownership during the period here. So our assumption in this model is that the ownership stake changes at the end of years. So our ownership during year two will just be equal to our ownership at the end of year one. Our ownership during year three will be equal to the ownership at the end of year two. And so we have that. Let's now go down to the cash flow statement and fill this in. We have this line item here for the purchase and sale of equity investments. So let's take this and then go up to the top and link to the change in the equity investment dollar amount right here and copy this across. And so we have the 30 here that is spent to increase our stake. We should also fill in the debt issuances because we are using 50% debt to do this deal. So I'll say max between our change in equity investment dollar amount here and zero. This way, if it's a negative change, if our stake decreases, we don't accidentally record something here. And then we'll multiply by the percentage of debt used, the 50% right there, and we can copy that across. So we now have our debt issuances. Now on the balance sheet, we want to link the equity investment line item on the asset side to all the equity investment related line items on the cash flow statement, gains and losses, purchases and sales, and net income and dividends. So let's just go in now and set up this link. We can see equity investments right here on the asset side is a non-current or long-term asset. So we will take the old number and then we'll go down and we will subtract gains and losses on equity investment sales, equity investment earnings, and dividends from equity investments, and then purchases and sales of equity investments as well. So we have all of those and I'll copy this across. So our basic links are now in place. The next step is that we need to actually record the earnings from this equity investment on the income statement. We need to record the new interest expense since we use debt to fund the deal. And then we need to record the dividends that we receive from this other company on the cash flow statement. Let's go in and do all that. First off, for the net interest expense, let's go and take our total debt right here. We'll just use the ending number from the previous period and then multiply by the interest rate on debt of 5% here, anchor that, and copy it across. We'll leave gains and losses blank for now. And then for the equity investment earnings, for this one, we'll take our ownership during the period and then we'll go over to the sub tab right here and multiply by the subsidiary company's net income. And that will be what we list on the income statement right here. So we can see that since we acquired the stake at the very end of year two, we start seeing earnings, net income from the subsidiary company starting in year three, going through year five. We have to reverse this on the cash flow statement because if we don't control this other company, if we own less than 50% of this other company, we don't get these earnings in cash. We only get in cash what it chooses to distribute in the form of dividends to us and to other shareholders in the company. Let's go down now and we will link to equity investment earnings with a negative sign on the income statement and flip this, copy that across. And then for the dividends, let's use a negative sign again and take our ownership percentage right here and then go to the subsidiary company's cash flow statement and take their dividends. The logic is pretty simple. If we own 30% of this company, then we get 30% of the dividends they issue. These represent the dividends they issue to all shareholders in the company. And we're going to take 30% of them since that's what we own of this company, at least starting in year three, the end of year two and onward. And so now we have that in place. If you go up and now take a look at the balance sheet, you can see how equity investments here are changing. The equity investment line item is like a mini shareholder's equity for this minority stake. It increases when net income from the other company increases and flows in, and it decreases based on the dividends that are issued to us by this other company. Now let's go to part two here and talk about what to do when the ownership stake changes. One big constraint here is that we're going to limit the ownership percentages to 49% at the most, because above that, once you get to 50%, in other words, control of the other company, the accounting changes and gets a whole lot more complicated and we don't have time to cover it in this quick tutorial. So if you look at all these cells and go to Alt DL for data validation, you'll see that I've enforced this maximum of 0.49, in other words, 49%, so that the ownership cannot go above that at all. 
Once again, for the assumptions, we need the subco's market cap and the newer ownership percentages in each year. We'll be assuming that the ownership can change only at the end of the year. For now, I am going to keep the first one at zero, 30%, and then I'll make this one go to 15%, and then 40%, and then 0%. So effectively, we acquire our 30% stake, we sell about half of it, then we acquire a bunch more and go up to 40% ownership, and then we sell everything and go back to 0% ownership right here. The easy part here is determining the percentage change in equity investments and the change in the equity investment dollar amount, which is just market cap times the percent change. And we actually already have these from the very first part. So our model right now actually supports the case where the ownership stake just keeps increasing. So for example, if I change this to 35%, 40%, 45%, all of this works perfectly fine. We get more and more net income from the associate company, our equity investment stake and the number of the balance sheet keeps getting higher and all the other items here work fine. So our model already handles this case where the stake keeps increasing, but the trickier part is what to do if you have a case where the stake possibly decreases because the company sells some of it. If the parent company's stake decreases, that means it has sold some of it. So we need to calculate the realized gain or loss when that happens. Unrealized gains or losses do not show up at all. So the fact that the subco's market cap keeps changing here is completely irrelevant. All that matters is what the number on the balance sheet is, and that's all that's gonna be reflected. You don't show unrealized gains and losses on this type of lineup. To start with, we need to calculate the cost basis right before the change. In other words, we need to take the old equity investment line item, subtract the earnings on the cash flow statement, and then subtract the dividends from it on the cash flow statement. Let's go down and do that right now. Cost basis right before change. This will be equal to our old line item in year one here. Then we'll go to the cash flow statement and subtract the equity investment earnings in row 85, and then we'll subtract the dividends. Now, if you think about what this is doing, really we're adding the earnings and subtracting the dividends because of the signs here, but we need to get to the cost basis right before our ownership stake in the company changes. We can copy this across. And then for the next part, to actually get the gain or loss on the sale, this is going to be a somewhat complex formula. So I'm going to enter it first, and then I'm going to go back to PowerPoint and explain the logic of this formula. First, we're going to check if the percentage change in equity investments is negative, in other words, less than zero. If that's true, then we're going to have something here. I'll just enter one for now. And if it's false, we're going to enter zero. We can't possibly have a gain or loss if the percentage change is 0% or positive, meaning that the company has increased its stake. We can only have a gain or loss if it's negative, meaning the company has decreased its stake. If it is negative, then we are going to take the market cap of the associate company in this period, times the previous ownership percentage at the end of the last year. And then we're going to subtract the cost basis just before the change. And then we're going to multiply by the negative of this percentage change divided by the ownership just before this change took place at the end of last year. Let's copy that across. And then we can also fill this in on the income statement. Like all gains and losses, we need to reverse this on the cash flow statement. So let's go in and do this. Copy this across and we can see that our balance sheet balances and our equity investment stake goes up and goes down and eventually goes to zero. So this is the formula for the gain or loss, but what is the actual logic here? Written out words, all we're saying is that if the percentage change is negative, we take the subco's market cap times the previous ownership percentage minus the cost basis, then we multiply by the negative of the percentage change divided by the previous ownership percentage. So the first part is pretty simple. As I said before, if the percentage change is greater than or equal to zero, the gain or loss is always gonna be zero because we haven't sold anything. The next part is a little easier to understand with a specific example. If we say the market cap is 150, the previous ownership is 30%, the cost basis is 30, and the new ownership percentage is 15%. For example, 150 times 30. So the market cap times the previous ownership percentage is just 45. And so the total gain or loss is going to be that 45 minus the cost basis. 45 minus 30 is 15. But the problem is we don't sell this entire investment. This represents the gain or loss as if we had all 30% and then we went to 0%. But that's not happening here. We're going to 15%, not 0%. So the last part, multiplying by the percentage change divided by the previous ownership percentage, just makes it so that if we sell 15% and we had 30%, 15% divided by 30% is 50%. So the gain is 15 times.
times 50%, which is 7.5 instead. So that's really all this is doing. It may look complicated or intimidating, but all we're doing is saying, let's calculate the gain on this 30%, but then let's adjust it in the last part and say, if we only sold half of it, let's reduce this by 50%. We already linked the statements, but as I said before, realized gains and losses always appear on the income statement as we're showing right here, and they're reversed on the cash flow statement. In terms of the rest of the statements, the purchase and sale of equity investments line item handles the rest. That plus the gain or loss equals the change in the equity investment line item. So as a quick example of that, right here for equity investments, it goes from 54 to zero. And really what's happening here, if you think about it, is that we have the sale for 50 right here. We also have a few items here related to the equity investment earnings and the dividends from equity investments. And if you add up everything going on here, so let's take the gain or loss, the equity investment earnings, the dividends, and then the purchase or sale, that adds up to 54 altogether. And that explains why we go from this 54 to zero in year five, as soon as we sell the entire stake in the other company. If you look at these gains and losses intuitively, they also make sense as well, because we always get a loss whenever, for example, the market cap of the associate companies declined, going from 100 to 50, or going from 150 to 125 here, we get that loss when we sell part of our stake or all of our stake and the associate company's value has declined at the same time. If you want, you can try different ownership percentages, different market caps, different debt and cash splits, but you'll see how it always balances as long as you stay under that 50% limit on the ownership in the associate company. We're at the end, so let's do a recap and summary now. The equity method of accounting is used when one company has significant influence but not control over another company. In other words, usually a 20% to 50% ownership stake. The basic idea is that the parent company records the subco's ownership percentage times the net income from the subco on its income statement under the equity investment line item. We saw that in the intro tab right here, how we just recorded the simple equity investment earnings line item. Then the parent co re reverses it on the cash flow statement and records the ownership percentage times subco's dividends as a positive cash inflow both items link into equity investments on the balance sheet. And you saw that on our parent tab over here and have the equity investment line item linked to all those related line items on the cash flow statement. When you change the ownership percentage, you have to calculate the cost basis first. Then you have to apply this formula that essentially takes the gain or loss on all 30% or however much the parent company owns and then adjusts it for the actual amount the parent company is selling. So it reduces the gain or loss proportionally based on the percentage of the stake that the parent company is selling. And that's all this formula is doing. That's about it for this tutorial on equity investments and the equity method of accounting. Hopefully now you should know more about this and at least understand the basics of how net income and dividends from equity investments flow through the financial statements.